It's not because the cup is bigger. It's because I like the character in this film better. The film, however... Hey guys, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Now this is a film that I honestly never thought would ever see the light of day. I always knew that I would see it tons of times in the animated films because animated films can make that sort of thing work. I even thought that maybe we would see a CG version of it at the most. I never thought I'd see it in live action. Ow, oh, I liked Man of Steel. I admitted there was problems with it and I didn't think it was the godsend that a lot of people thought it was, but I didn't think it was the absolute train wreck that a lot of people thought it was as well. I enjoyed it. It's flawed but I still enjoyed it as a film. Batman v Superman is hard to get along with. Now, I know that the critics have torn this apart, but the fans have loved it, and I understand why the fans love it, because there's a lot of fan homage to DC, the whole DC universe, all the characters, the people who they talk about. This film is basically the entire Marvel universe, but in reverse. We're basically getting an overload of DC mythology, characters, new introductions, all this, and it's too much. That is the biggest complaint this film has. It's the biggest issue, is there's too much going on. We have too many characters to talk about. We have too many events happening. We have too many future events happening. It's basically almost like what Avengers 2 had, with the whole just trying to set up too many angles and, and not enough time. In essence, Batman v Superman is an eight hour long movie trying to be condensed into a two hour long film. Just to try and put this film together must have been an absolute pain in the ass because the pacing is all over the place. The first hour is very dry, it's very slow, it's very shifting, which is kind of something we would expect. We're trying to be introduced to these new versions of these characters as though we already know them and then be just very, you know, adapt to them. Which we can be to an extent, but the problem is there's just too much going on. And probably the biggest waste in this film is Gail Gatto. I was skeptical about her, but she kicked ass as Wonder Woman. Hell, her music was different from the same bon, don, 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 we got in the film. Except she's only in it for 10 bloody minutes. And we just, she's just thrown in. I want to see more time with these characters. I want to see more interactions. I want to see more of this conflict. And the whole part of the film, the whole beginning half, is the idea that Superman should be held uh, held accountable for what he's done, except he's not being held accountable for stuff like, say, what happened with Metropolis. He's being held accountable for stuff that clearly was not his fault. It's clearly a setup. That is the focus of his whole, you should be kept in check. And it's so obvious that it's just stupid because that's the point, the whole point that we were getting from the trailers is that Superman was being held accountable for the stuff that happened in Metropolis and the fact that he has so much power that people are scared shitless of him. And then Bruce Wayne was doing it because he thought he had to be held in check. We had to take him down, more, if not take him down, we had to have a means of which to take him down. At least that's what's been in the comics. Batman's always had a way to take down Superman. Except in this film, the reason why the two go at each other is so moronically simple that everything that we got from the trailers is half-assed. And that's another thing too. If you have seen the trailers, in essence, we have seen every good part of the film in those trailers. Now, okay, I've ragged on, now let me get to the good. Henry Cavill is once again awesome as the man in blue because we actually, in the limited amount of bloody time we have with him, we do see that he is conflicted, that he is trying to still be good in a world that clearly doesn't like him, is hating him for what he's doing, but he's still trying to prove that I'm here to help you, I'm not here to be a god, but then he starts to see what he's becoming to these people and he starts to have the weight on his shoulders and then comes a moment where he's just like I can't do it I can't be the good guy but the problem is it's not as well executed as it could have been because the script is not as good because it's written by this fucking hack I don't know why the fuck this guy keeps getting fucking work in the industry I'm sorry but I hate goddamn David S. Goyer. Why DC Universe keeps thinking that he's a great angle considering all the flops and bullshit he's made in the past baffles me. But the big question is how was the fight scene between the two? And at least to say it was 
pretty good. It was actually much betterly executed than I thought it would be, considering how complete opposite the two are. And it was also filmed in IMAX. It was filmed in the white, the, uh, the the full screen, which was great. However, here's the thing: when you have superhero films, when you have two heroes and they're supposedly building up towards this big fight, you have them display their skills beforehand. You have them do stuff that kind of builds up who they are. Batman, we don't really see like he literally the first theoretical fight that he has is with Superman. I'm not fucking joking. He doesn't fight goons until after he's fought, in, he's fought Superman. But what's the point of fighting goons when you fought Superman? I'm ragging on this, I know, I'm being hateful, I don't want to be, but I'm literally left with no option. The climax of the film is actually the best part, because we actually get to see layers of characters albeit brief, but we see some different sides, especially with Henry Cavill and with Ben Affleck's Batman. But the thing is, it's just too much. We have so much on screen. We have so many assets that are being filtered into our brain. The entire climax is a visually stunning epic, and it completely overblows your brain, which is fantastic to watch. Admittedly, there are moments here and there in the film that I like. There are surprises that came that I didn't even expect, and the moral ambiguity between the actions of Batman and the actions of Superman are weighed. And the funny thing is, they actually just gloss over shit that people got all mad about in previous with Man of Steel, and they don't even care. Like, killing, identities, all this stuff. It's barely even addressed. It's like they gloss it over because they realize that you can't really do that shit in these kind of movies anymore, which I did like. And I like the ending. I actually do enjoy how the film ends, but up until the ending, I wasn't entertained. I was very anxious in my seat. And that's the worst part of this film, is that we have so much leading up to what we wanted, but we have so many other elements. Instead of getting these pieces being the epic set piece, we actually have little mini pieces all crammed together. My best way to break it down is imagine you have an essay due next week and you write it the first day and then you don't do anything else. You literally hand it in like that. That's what this film feels like. Instead of being well tuned, instead of having the errors taken out, instead of being filtered down and properly structured, it feels like the film had it was the first draft and there was reports that there had multiple rewrites and then Ben Affleck was even rewriting stuff on the fucking set. Oh yeah, Jesse Eisenberg, Lex Luthor, fucking hated him. I absolutely couldn't stand his character and I'm not saying that in a way that, oh he was so evil that I couldn't stand him. I don't know what the fuck he was doing but I think that Zack Snyder just literally gave him a ham, a giant roast ham and said, Jesse, I want you to emulate this ham. Uh, no, even better, I want you to become the ham. Here's a comparison. You thought that Kevin Spacey was too much in Superman Returns? He's fucking nothing in comparison. So in the end, what do I think of Superman versus Batman? I'm not buying it. The fact that Christopher Nolan didn't have any sort of overview on this film, it clearly shows. The fact that Goyer had way too many fucking too much goddamn freedom just ruins the script. Batman v Superman is a 2 out of 7. I am dead serious. I can't believe I'm giving it that. But I just did not enjoy this movie until the final part. For every element that was good, it was layered on by five elements that were bad. Anyway guys, I'm sorry if I piss you off, but that's just my opinion. I can't believe I'm agreeing with Alex Ledbetter from WhatCulture.com, but I'm actually agreeing with that guy. I can't. I'm mad at myself right now for these thoughts. But anyway, guys, that's all for me. Let me know what you think of it. I'm off to forget about it.